Our goal is to make them stronger and better able to withstand. And I, and I wanted to ask a question that I heard a little earlier, maybe in a different way, and is it's a hard one, sort of, because it because it asks you to look back. But if you if you look back to you know, had the Dodd Frank law been in place and had the 2010 reforms been in effect four years ago, what what do you think the likelihood is that the reserve fund would have broken the buck? Is it possible that that requirements under Dodd Frank that w would have reduced the likelihood that Lehman Brothers, in which the reserve fund was heavily invested, would have been in such terrible shape? Would the liquidity requirements and improved credit standards in the 2010 reforms have affected? the wherewithal of the reserve fund under such circumstances? I, I don't know that the um, <coughs> 2010 amendments um, would have been enough. I think they have been very valuable. I think they have contributed to the resiliency of money market funds. But they don't address a sudden credit event that causes a loss, which is what we had in reserve when, when Lehman declared bankruptcy and the paper was valued at zero. Um, those reforms, while they require more liquidity, they require shorter maturities, they require higher quality, they don't address a sudden credit event. They really don't address or alter the incentive a shareholder has to run if they even fear losses because there's no penalty to getting out quick. Um, there's a real penalty to hanging around, potentially. Um, I don't think they address the unfair <coughs> results that can occur when a sophisticated institutional <coughs> investor gets out quickly and losses are concentrated um, <coughs> with uh, retail investors or retail investors are left in a frozen fund and can't access um, their liquidity. So I think, um, <coughs> I, I don't think they would have been enough. Um, and that's really why we're here today.